Hello. This video sees me laying on my northern nasal twang and my goofy cartoons in response to lots of students who have been asking me for guidance in comparing poems. Now, considering both similarities and differences, I'm going to look at two poems drawn from the Relationships Cluster of the Edexcel GCSE English Literature. Not doing Edexcel, not doing Relationships, not a problem. Trust me, this video is still YouTube gold for anybody intending to craft top spec exam paragraphs on poetry to wow the examiner. So you open up the exam booklet and this ugly devil comes tearing out at you. Compare how family relationships are presented in nettles and one other poem. In your answer, you should consider the poet's use of language, form and structure, the influence of the context in which the poems were written. We're basically sizing up our enemy here, folks. This is what we're up against for the next 35 minutes of the exam. Therefore, let's start hacking this beast down to size, identifying key words that will clarify the job being asked of us by the examiner. And through the miracle of modern technology, I've highlighted the key words here. Let's go through them. Compare is obviously highlighted because this is a comparative essay. If I'm just looking at one poem, my grade is going to go into free fall. I need to access the higher grades by looking at two poems together. How is also highlighted. How just refers to the poetic techniques employed by the poet. The key key phrase or the key key words, if you like, are the theme that's explored in this essay. In this case, family relationships. We'll put a big airy box around that. Presented, I've highlighted because how is this theme of family relationships presented? Are family relationships presented as harmonious, uh, fractious or troubled? You know, is it presented positively or negatively? So presented is a word that I've highlighted. And of course, Nettles is my named poem. I have to talk about this one. Obviously, I've got a bit more flexibility in the other choice. Four lines down, you'll notice I put around box round and. Uh, sadly, with this exam board at Excel, if you do a fantastic job of analysing similes and metaphors, they don't care if you haven't also addressed an element of structure, say on John Beaumont or Rhyme Scheme. You know, your grade will go into free fall if you don't look at both. Is that fair? No, but that's life. You'll notice I've also underlined context because what this essay is asking of me is to link the poem to the era it was written, maybe some details about the poet's life or about how the poem is received by the modern reader to modernise and modern sensibilities. So let's plan our response now. Uh, I don't really care if you do it as a Venn diagram as presented here to overlapping circles or a mind map or bullet points but I would urge you to plan, because your work won't be half as good as it should if you don't. In the left circle, I'm going to focus on Nettles, uh, the name poem. And the poem that I'm going to link it to from the Relationships Cluster, uh, because this other poem also looks at the theme of family relationships, is My Father Would Not Show Us, M-F-W-N-S-U, My Father Would Not Show Us, by the hilariously named Ingrid de Kock. So, let's kick off by looking in the poem Nettles at the father's anger at the source of his son's pain, the nettles. Basically, the boy falls into the nettle bed, dad's not a happy camper. And that anger that the narrator feels, the father feels, is a measure of the relationship. It's a, a measure of the loving bond between father and son. There's our point. Let's back it up with some evidence. And here we go. Your man sharpens his bill hook and he goes out and it says that he slashed with fury with it till not a nettle stood. Now, you notice I put a little slashed line next to the word it. This is to denote the line break because I'm going to be a real clever Trevor and analyse a structural technique here, the enjambement. Uh, enjambement creates pace because you'll notice there's no full stop or comma punctuation mark to slow down the flow from one line to another. And why would the poet wish to create pace here? Well, it captures the kind of the fury, the swift cutting motion, that slashing motion of the narrator with the bill hook. It captures fury and fluency. You'll notice also words like fury and till. These are plosive words because they, well, plosive sounds. F and t, what I call spitting sounds. Technical term is plosives. And these kind of convey a harsh or bitter or aggressive tone, which reflects the, the anger that the father's feeling. So, just to recap, clever Trevor that I am, I've looked at two interpretations for this evidence. Uh, I've looked at the genre effect. I've also looked at the effect of the plosive. In contrast, in the poem my father would not show us, we're seeing a distinct lack 
of emotion, of any emotion, uh, in the relationship between father and daughter. Um, when the daughter goes to check out the body in the morgue, she comments, it's cold in here, which, yes, on one level alludes to morgues, where you have to keep a low temperature to preserve the bodies. But, of course, we can read this line metaphorically as well, to telegraph a sense of a lack of human warmth or affection in the relationship. Now, as you probably know, those fun-loving folk at the exam board decree that we've now got to look at structure as well as language, or they'll take it out on our exam grade. Yeah, cheers, lads. You're making wheel clampers look like members of the Red Cross there. So, let's analyse a structural feature, in this case, rhyme scheme. And a similarity that I'm going to forge here is that in both poems, structural features serve to comment on the relationship. In Nettles, there's a fixed AB, AB rhyme scheme. And what this fixed structure does, what it infers or conveys or telegraphs, is a sense of inevitability. You know, the, the, the pain that this boy is going to feel uh, in life, the wounds, physical and emotional, that life will bestow on him, that's inescapable. And a fixed rhyme scheme kind of reflects the fixed odds, the fixed certainty that he's going to hurt in the future. Life is going to take pot shots at him. However, in de Kock's poem, My Father Would Not Show Us, there is an irregular rhyme scheme. And this too conveys information about the relationship. What this conveys is a sense of uncertainty, of uncertainty. She's unclear of her father's feelings for her. She's unclear of how she feels about her father. And I would argue that the irregular rhyme scheme helps to capture some of that confusion, that absence of certainty. Right, with these details, we're going to package them up and turn them into a top spec exam paragraph. The sort that's going to have you saying, Ooh la la, Monsieur Taylor, c'est incroyable, n'est-ce pas? In other words, the sort of paragraph so polished, you can see your face in it. So let's lock in on these details in Nettles. A measure of the narrator's love for his son can be found in his presentation of the Nettles, because he uses military imagery, army references, to present the Nettles. He refers to them as a regiment of spite, a fierce parade. And over the next couple of slides, we're going to tack on an interpretation, and as I say, spin this into exam gold, a solid examiner pleasing paragraph. We'll briefly remind ourselves of the question again. Our key focus here is family relationships. And I'm just going to look at language in this paragraph, but I will make sure that I bolt on some relevant contextual detail too. So compare how family relationships are presented in Nettles and one other poem. Here we go. In Nettles, Scannell employs metaphor to present his ideas about his son's suffering. Notice in this point, my first line, I've mentioned the language technique that's used, metaphor, I'll get brownie points for that, and I've also mentioned the son, because we're talking, of course, about family relationships here. And we'll tonk in some supporting evidence now to back up our point. Uh, the nettles is described as a regiment of spite and a fierce parade. As I say, the evidence's job is to support the point, and these two phrases are doing the job beautifully. Here's our explanation now. Uh, these images are drawn from the lexical field of the military. This serves to powerfully convey to the reader the violent intensity of the nettles, as well as the idea that they are found in large numbers, like a military unit. If the term lexical field is a little bit scary, it shouldn't be. It basically means words that are linked by a common theme, in this case the military. Um, the reason I put powerfully in there is because my exam board at Excel insists that you use evaluative language to kind of judge the poem, if you like, and say how good it is. And uh, we still have to tick a box with that Excel and mention the reader to convey to the reader. Always have to put that in if you're dealing with that Excel. It's a little itch of theirs that we have to scratch. Also, I've put in two interpretations here. I've said it reflects the violent intensity of the nettles uh, and also the fact that they're found in large numbers. So I'm, I'm evaluating language here by throwing out two interpretations. Now, as much as I loved that explanation in blue, I wasn't 100% sure that it answered the question that was set about family relationships. So I've just added a little bit of developmental detail to yoke my response back to the question. Here we perceive the narrator's strong bond with his son because he presents the nettles in such a threatening manner. Now it's time to roll out that contextual factor. Interestingly, Scannell served in the military during World War II. Well, yeah, Mr Taylor, that's context, all right. But, you know, so far, so blah. Can we develop that point, perhaps? course we can. 
we can contextualize the negative presentation of the army in this poem. Let's see how we do it. His negative depiction of the army in this poem may be due to the brutal treatment he endured in the military prison after being arrested for desertion. A very brief blast of self-promotion here, folks. God love you, those good people that have already shelled out their shekels and bought my book. It's notching up some good reviews on Amazon. Don't want it? Well, that's your lifestyle choice, but I tell you, you're missing a trick. Back to business then. We can contrast that use of military language in Nettles to the very ambiguous language, the deliberately ambiguous language used by de Kock in My Father Would Not Show Us. Uh, she talks about her father's wry smile, his half-turned face. Now this is ambivalent or ambiguous or vague or unclear, call it what you will, because it can be interpreted in two ways. A wry smile might suggest a kind of indulgent smile, suggesting a kind of warm feeling towards his children. Or it might be a kind of sarcastic, superior, sly smile, denoting a condescending attitude to his children. Ditto the half-turned face, well, is he turning towards them, suggesting a bond, or is he turning away from them, suggesting emotional detachment? Very well-crafted, ambiguous phrase, that. Now, before I knock out the comparative paragraph on those details from My Father Would Not Show Us, I just want to direct your attention to the second paragraph here from the Examiner's Mark Scheme, because it says, The coverage of the two poems need not be equally weighted, but the second poem should have substantial treatment. So in other words, yes, you still need to forge comparisons to ensure you're getting those highest marks, but your comparative paragraph doesn't have to be of the same depth. Um, because the mark scheme says the highest marks, the highest marks will go to responses that show a wide range of comparisons. I would suggest that in 35 minutes, the only way that's possible is by making those comparative paragraphs short and sweet. So here is my comparative paragraph, a working definition of short and sweet. However, in the poem My Father, de Cox narrator suggests her relationship with her father is ambiguous. The reference to his wry and half-turned smile could imply he was mocking or generally amused by his children. Notice how I've kicked off that comparative paragraph with a connective. However, that is forging a link between Nettles and this poem, suggesting a difference rather than similarity. Have a look at context? No. Is there deep analysis? Well, not really. I mean, I could have had a party deconstructing the two interpretations of this line, but I'm trying to foster short and snappy comparisons so that by the end of the exam response, I've done enough to warrant a wide range of comparisons. I'm saving my laser locking deep textual analysis for the main paragraph, not the comparative one. Now, this video should be done and dusted in about 60 seconds, folks, because I'm definitely done talking and you're probably done listening. So you recall this information, contrasting the strong emotion felt by the father when his son gets injured by the nettles with the, the lack of emotion in de Kock's poem in her relationship with her father. Because I'm going to turn this one into model exam paragraphs as well, comparative paragraphs. But this time I'll do a switcheroo. My main focus will be on de Kock's poem, My Father Would, uh, and my secondary or comparative Fast and Furious Billy Whiz paragraph will be on nettles. So if you open eye holes, I'll close my pie hole. Have a read of this, drink in its beauty. And here's my comparative paragraph, short and sweet, as suggested. And so I'll leave you with possibly the worst pitch of a nettle ever commit to the back of a beer mat. Oh aye. And another nod to my brilliant book for fine tuning your imaginative writing. And we're out of here. Two relationships poems compared like a pro. Until next time, cheerio.